Charles, could you please talk about what sets Hydra apart in terms of sharding? Uh, it sets it apart because it doesn't shard. It's a layer two protocol, and that's the power of these things. You want to do two things at the same time. You want to have a path that if you have to shard the ledger itself, you can do that in a very explicit or implicit way. Implicit is side chains, explicit is what F2 is trying to do. Where they actually have multiple ledgers and they're all interoperable and communicating with each other and spun up and down. Then uh, you have to have a system where you can gracefully take transactions, batch them and run them off chain outside of the system. That's what Lightning does and what Hydra is aspiring to do and so forth. They are complementary. So you can do both at the same time. The advantage of a level two solution is it does not require soft and hard fork for Cardano. And the stake pool operators can run these channels and they're already trusted to be operators so they can reuse their pledge and bonds and these things to basically facilitate uh, the state channels. So we get that for free. It's low hanging fruit. You can have competitiveness in the implementation. It gives you a path to a DEX. It gives you a path to interchain interoperability and it can scale to millions of transactions per second if you want to do that. Brain dead obvious, low cost, super high return, and you leverage years of prior results and research for these things. Um, uh, in terms of ledger sharding, super complicated. The security of your system scales down to a third to a quarter. You have to introduce a lot of usually trusted centralized infrastructure to bootstrap it or create fail safes as you're getting the system out. And Byzantine behavior dramatically reduces the performance of the system, dramatically. So when everybody's honest, the system is probably very fast. When you have an event, the system slows down. That's why Ghost and Phantom and these other DAG protocols didn't work out the way that people intended. Um, so it's not all it's made up to be and you get massive, massive complexity creep into the system. So if you have two options, one is saying, I can easily add this on, it fits my consensus model. I don't have to shard the base ledger and I get so much great stuff from it and it's low cost, high return. Or the other, I can go and have to do five years of research and figure a bunch of stuff out like F2, super complicated, easy to get things wrong and I lose security embracing it. And the end result is both systems will have equivalent performance, probably better performance than the single shard system because you can optimize the base ledger and segregate transactions accordingly. Uh, I would say Hydra is much better. It's much easier. It's much lower hanging fruit. And that's what you get when you have good system architects, good scientists, and a respect for the past. When you're in love with your own ideas, you get caught in a cycle of groupthink over and over and over and over and over and over again then at the end of the day, you end up in a really bad position where you just in double down and embrace uh, basically concepts that are counterproductive for being able to build sustainable ecosystems. So we wish everybody who's doing this ledger-based sharding well, but I think it's not the right time to do that. We need another three to five years of foundational research to get to a point where it's very promising. And there are certainly a lot of great approaches. Some people send me proposals from prominent universities asking for funding for their approaches. And every now and then I get super tempted to pursue it because they're legitimately good at angles. But let's not lie to ourselves. There's years worth of homework that has to be done and the dog is going to eat it more than once. Hydra is ready to go in terms of concepts and in terms of theory. It's easy to understand, it's easy to layer on and it fits our topology quite well. And you can implement it through a series of competing teams building competing clients so you get client diversity and you can implement it in the sub million dollar level for a lot of these proof of concepts and in the five million dollar level for a finished end-to-end -end product that's your complexity class your cost class and that means you can have multiple bets and then you can add more and more features like a dex and interoperability and you know, with bitcoin and ethereum and you know all these types of things with that type of a system it makes a lot more sense you know, gradual escalation. Don't don't throw the whole baby out with the bathwater.